Hey guys, this is John. This is a Rad 2 tutorial video, Roguelike Adventures in Dungeons 2. This video is basically 10 things I wish I knew when I first started playing Rad 2. Okay, so the first thing we're actually going to do, we're going to go delete a config setting. On the default Rad 2, you can't actually use the Vein Miner uh, ability. You can't use it on stone, you can only use it on ore. I don't like this and I disable it. So what you need to do is come over here to your Curse Forge, click on your Rad 2 pack, click over here on the three dots. Come on down to open folder. This will open up your folders in your in Windows. You just need to come over here to your config at the top. Come on down to Paxi right here, P-A-X-I. Open up the data packs folder. Come down here to where it says Ultimine Blacklist. Click on data, FTB Multimine, tags, blocks, and then right here this file, excluded blocks. You can open up this file with notepad. There's going to be a ton of values here, like a bunch of stones and stuff. You can just highlight them all and delete it. That will make it so you can vein mine stone and other rocks and other dimensions. You could probably also just delete this file, the excluded blocks file, and it will probably still work. Also, remember, every time you update Rad 2, you're probably going to have to delete this file every time. So just keep that in mind. Once you delete that file, then you will be able to use the vein miner ability, and it will allow you to break stones, which is super helpful. It's really nice uh, having this vein miner ability so that you can mine a ton of stone very easily. The second thing I wish I knew was using a leap spell early in the game. You can make this leap spell actually pretty early on once you've unlocked Ars Novo. Leap is just a tier 1 spell. Um, if you want to use slow fall with it, that is a tier 2 spell, but at least initially on you can just make a leap, simple leap spell with just self, leap, and then you can put on amplify 1 if you want. And then like I said, once you get to tier 2 for your spell book, you can add on slow fall amplify to or whatever and it makes a very simple spell that basically will allow you to fly around and get around places very easily i wish i was using this right at the beginning of the game because you pretty much can get this move pretty early on in the game and uh yeah i definitely regret not making it early on it's very nice if you make this spell very early on in the game the number three thing is using the Corel Tombstone mod. I wish I was leveling it up earlier. You, there's a hotkey you can activate to look at your knowledge of death for Corel Tombstone. There's a bunch of skills in here you can level up, such as like the Jailer, you'll get a chance to get a key so you can teleport back to your grave. Or if you're a cheating bastard like me and you don't need that, because I use Keep Inventory, you can also just level up this Memento Mori to get 100% more XP. This Scribe uh, ability is really nice, you get more enchantments when you disenchant. Uh, books or you disenchant gear using the Corel tombstone and then also a very easy way to level up Corel is you can make a onk which you can use to pray with uh, on villagers to get more XP from the knowledge of death I think you might need a couple levels of knowledge of death in order to pray for villagers but if not I think you can you might be able to do it early on I'm not sure but it's definitely a great mod you should spend time leveling up Corel tombstone for the disenchantment uh, purposes and then also the other skills in the mod Number four is making a fell tree spell as soon as possible. This is a tier two glyph right here, fell. You just need to combine it with projectile, fell, and then AoE. And it will allow you to basically just delete trees completely. And this is probably the best way to chop trees in the game. Very easy. Um, but like I said, you do need to have a level two spell book. So just keep that in mind. You'll need to have access to the nether in order to have this spell. But it's really nice, it makes it so chopping trees is super easy and you pretty much don't have to worry about chopping trees anymore. Because <laughs> it makes it so you can just chop trees very fast and very easily. Okay, number five is making a auto feeder lunchbox. Basically you want to make a golden lunchbox which comes from the Spice of Life uh, mod. You basically just load it up with a bunch of food and then what you need to do is you'll need to make this. It's called an advanced feeding upgrade. It basically will allow you to, you could put the lunchbox over here, so it will auto feed from the lunchbox. You don't have to worry about eating from the lunchbox or anything. You just need to set it to allow. And the main reason we're doing this is so that way we can have this food diversity buff from this mod, which gives us lots of buffs like increased health, regen, speed, and lots of other really useful buffs. It's not too bad to make this advanced feeding upgrade. You can just slot it into your backpack. You don't actually need to have access to the nether in order to make this, so you should be able to get this pretty early on. Number six is making a XP backpack. Basically, this is a backpack that a separate backpack that has a tank upgrade, an experience pump upgrade, and a bunch of stack upgrades on it. You can use iron or gold stack upgrades, whichever you can afford. The actual experience pump upgrade itself will need access to the nether because you need to have blaze powder in order to make it. 
Once you have this item, you can set a limit if you want to. You can store, take all experience instantly. You can also set a limit to which the XP backpack will always stay at that limit. You can also repair items that have mending. It is super helpful. It's probably one of the most useful items in Rad 2 as you will be constantly using your levels to teleport or else create enchanted items and whatnot. It is a very helpful item and everybody should have this. I wish I started using it earlier in the game. Number seven is disenchanting items. There's two methods of using disenchantments that are very easy. You can use the Book of Disenchantment from Corel Tombstone or else the Tome of Hungering Knowledge from Enigmatic Legacy. This basically will allow you to disenchant your items and it's very helpful. You'll just need to have grave souls, which are these purple souls that you will see on decorative graves. So you should get in the habit of making a bunch of decorative graves. The reason why we usually use Book of Disenchantments from Corel more often than the other ones is because if you use Book of Disenchantment from Creel Tombstone on an item, it will take off the enchants and it will also reset the XP penalty. You know how every time you keep adding enchantments to an item on the blacksmith, it'll get more expensive. Well, by using this Book of Disenchantment from Creel Tombstone, it will reset that penalty. So it will allow you to keep adding on enchants at a lower cost. The alternative book is the Tome of Hungry Knowledge. All you basically need to do is just combine it with an item that you want to disenchant and it will basically put all of the the enchantments onto one book. The reason why you would want to use this tome instead is this is more for taking off enchantments off of an item that you don't really care about. Maybe you found a piece of gear that dropped and you're not going to use the piece of gear, you just want to rip off the enchantments. So you, instead you would use the Tome of Hungering Knowledge. Tome Book of Disenchantment is more for items that you want to keep using so that way you can reset the level penalty. Just keep in mind for the Tome of Hungering Knowledge, you will need to have access to the Nether and then also have access to Prismarine, so you'll need to be able to clear an ocean monument in order to make these Tomes of Hungering Knowledge very easily. Number eight is how to look up XP boosts. People are always asking me, how do I level up this skill or how do I level up that skill? What you need to do is go over to the Project MMO settings. The default keybind is P. You can come over here to the glossary and then these two sections right here, main hand XP boosting items and worn XP boosting items, this will allow you, there's a little search bar down here. It'll allow you to basically type in whatever you want to level up and you can look at all of the gear that has XP boosts. So if, for example, if you're trying to level up gathering, you can look at this whole list and find out what's the best stuff to level up gathering. In this case, the diamond ring, the heart of earth, the troll skull. So yeah, you can look up whatever skill you want. If you want to level up mining, combat, whatever. And this will allow you to find the best gear that you need to equip in order to level up that skill. This is really helpful. I wish I would have been doing using this earlier on in the game because in the beginning I really didn't care about XP boosts or anything like that. But as you get higher level, you will need to worry about XP boosts because it takes a lot longer to get more XP, obviously, to level up to high levels. And that brings us to number nine, which is every time you're accepting quest XP rewards, which you'll usually find, for example, over here in Meet Your Fight, every time you complete a mission and then it will give you a choice reward for XP, I would suggest always choosing Endurance because Endurance is very important. You need Endurance in order to use high level armor and whatnot. And it's also just really a pain in the ass to level up. So like I said, I would suggest always take Endurance anytime you get one of these uh, quest rewards that grant XP. You could also choose Smithing if you want to because Smithing is also kind of annoying to level up. But I feel like since Survival is so important, I feel like Endurance is probably the most important thing. And it's, like I said, it's kind of annoying to get XP for because you actually, you have to get hit in order to get endurance. It's not like it's very easy to farm. Also remember the whole XP boost thing. Make sure you actually have your XP boost gear equipped. So make sure any kind of XP boost you can get for endurance. Make sure you put it on before you actually accept the, uh, the quest reward. Because you will actually get more XP from accepting the quest reward if you're wearing uh, endurance gear gear that increases your XP bonus for endurance. Just showing this as an example, shields give a ton of endurance XP, so if you want to level up endurance fast, you should always be using a shield because you will get a ton more endurance XP while wielding a shield. Number 10 is this block over here. It's called the Enchantment Library. This is from Apotheosis. You should make this, this block as soon as you can because it will basically allow you to store all of the enchants that you get Rat 2 is a very heavy enchant game. You pretty much get enchantments drops from almost every monster you kill. You're going to be loaded with tons of enchantment books while you play Rad 2. So it's very nice to have this enchantment library. It will allow you to store enchantments. And then also when you're actually wanting to enchant something, you can basically extract the enchantments. Or if you want to make one mega book that has all the enchantments that you want on it, 
you can do that as well. You can also just store enchantments if you don't like what you made. It's a very useful block to make, just keep in mind it does take these four infused hell shelves, which can be kind of a pain in the ass to make in the early game, uh, because you need blaze rods and potion of regen and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. But it is definitely worth the effort to create the, these infused hell shelves, which will allow you to create the enchantment library. This is probably one of the most important blocks you can make in Rad 2. Alright, so I lied. This is longer than a 10 things I wish I knew about video. We're going on to number 11, which is using the Ritual Brazier and a Scrying Ritual in order to mine stuff. So basically you can make this Ritual Brazier from Ars Novo. You can set it down. You'll need to use a totem of, or a tablet of scrying, which you click right click to put it on. In this case, we're going to use it to find ancient debris. This will basically give us a spell that will allow us to see ancient debris with x-ray vision. You can also use this ability to mine anything else you want, whether it be diamond, gold, whatever is the item, as long as it's a block that can be searched. Once you have the buff of the scrying ritual, it will make items appear like this, and you can basically just go and find the item or the block that you're looking for and very easily mine it. This is basically a way to just have a cheat mode to give you x-ray vision, but it's totally allowed and it's in Ars Novo. It's very helpful and you should definitely do it, especially if you're trying to get ancient debris. It is very helpful. This is probably the best way to get ancient debris. Uh, like in all of Minecraft. One thing to keep in mind if you are using the spell, make sure that you don't accidentally dispel yourself if you have a dispel spell, and if you use it, it will actually take off the buff, the scrying buff. So make sure if you have the scrying buff on, you don't accidentally dispel yourself. Number 12 is basically making a scythe from the Spartan Weaponry mod. You can make one of these scythes here. Make sure it actually says Spartan Weaponry. These scythes basically give you a very high chance to get skulls from monsters. So when you get to the point where you want to be farming wither skulls, you can make one of these scythes, go find a wither uh, skeleton spawner, and then you should be able to use this scythe to farm a ton of skulls very easily and very fast. Number 13 is basically kill the wither and kill the ender dragon as soon as possible. I put doing these off for a long time because I was scared of the increase in difficulty because if you don't know when you kill the wither and then when you kill the ender dragon the difficulty of the game increases very similar to terraria. I would suggest you do this as soon as possible because like I said I put it off for the longest time and once I actually did get into expert mode and master mode it wasn't really that much harder <laughs> than the rest of the game and even the bonuses that you get from increased difficulty are not really that great. It doesn't really matter to be honest. Like, really the best thing about the higher difficulty modes is that you get increased XP from kills and whatnot. And the worst part is that you'll have to use bandages, such as golden bandages later on, because you have a higher chance of being bled once you get into the higher difficulties. But other than that, it's very necessary. You definitely should do it as soon as possible because you can actually use the nether stars that you get from the wither, and you can actually use those to buy gear from the diamond shop. You can trade nether stars for diamond coins, and then you can use that to buy super OP trinkets that maybe you're missing. For example, if you're missing the trinkets to make the Ankh shield, you could farm the wither so that you can make the Ankh shield, which will make you immune to basically almost all debuffs. Definitely worth it to kill the wither. And then also, if for the end, it's important to kill the ender dragon because getting mending enchantment, for example, is very easy to get in the end. So it's definitely worth killing the ender dragon so that way you have access to the end and you can go farm some end dungeons and get yourself a lot of mending, which will finally end your durability problems for all of your gear. And number 14 is using affixes. This is something you can do end game. You can basically create super powerful armor by using affix tomes, which are these tomes over here. You can craft them by making a tome of scrapping with a rarity shard. You get these rarity shards by, for example, this blue one you would get from cooking a blue item with it has a blue border around it if it's a rare item. You would cook it on a soul campfire, which would give you the rarity shard. Then you can use this rare affix tome on a blue item to take off the affix, like armor or whatever, for example. You can basically add these affixes onto your armor to make super broken OP armor that's actually really, like, way better than even some of the endgame armor. I'm actually talking to Dreams to have this removed because I feel like it's too OP and breaks, makes it so you don't even have to get endgame armor because you can just make super OP armor like diamond armor and netherite. But for the time being, if it's still in the game, you should definitely do this because it allows you to make super broken OP armor and make it so you're almost unkillable. And if you're wondering where to get affixes, you can get them from Apotheosis bosses, but you can also find them very easily from these wizard towers. You can usually find these in plains biomes. You can go inside and you can find usually a bunch of affix items in the chest. Just be aware at the top there usually is a TNT trap, so make sure you disarm the TNT before you actually get all the treasure. 
So that's it for the video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that helped you out. Please don't feel shy if you want to ask questions in the comments of my videos. I'm always trying to help people out. Hopefully this helped you out because a lot of these things I wish I knew at the beginning of Rad 2 and it would have made my life a lot easier if I had known most of these things at the beginning of playing Rad 2. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you around. Bye.